This is Ken Johnson for SecurityCast. In this episode, we cover the absolute basics of getting Burp Suite up and running. In addition, we will provide an overview of some of Burp's configuration options. The first thing we will cover is using the Foxy Proxy plugin within Firefox. We will configure Foxy Proxy to have an entry named Burp. In addition, that entry will point to our local proxy. We will add a new proxy and we'll enter the IP and port in which Burp is running. To verify these settings, you can go to Proxy, Options tab, and review the configuration. Now enter the IP address. In this case, it's our local IP address and port 8080. We'll also name this Burp and that way it's easily identifiable and accessible through Firefox. In addition, we'll export our CA certificate. This is so that we don't have SSL errors when attempting to send traffic through Burp to HTTPS enabled sites. We'll just save this to an arbitrary location, uh, desktop. and we'll save it as portswigger.cert. And once we've done that, we can navigate to our browser of choice and modify our preferences to include that certificate as a CA cert authority. This means that Portswigger's certificate is given access to sign SSL certificates on behalf of the web application uh, for which we are trying to communicate. So we've gone ahead and imported this certificate into Firefox and now we are ready to get started. So now all traffic that we send will go through Burp. First thing we're going to do is go to target scope and add a target. In this case, it's going to be an application running on localhost port 3000. The next thing we're going to do is exclude from scope an arbitrary file, in this case, live reload. And this means that we do not want to scan or spider this endpoint. Inclusion and exclusion are incredibly important as they allow you to filter certain options uh, within Burp, which we will show, and allow you to focus on only the application for which you are hacking. So we're successfully proxying through Burp. And at this point, we want to take a look at some of our options. So our first option is intercepting client requests. We're going to go ahead and uncheck the restriction uh, by file extension, and we're going to check that any request that goes through the proxy and is in uh, our target scope, uh, we should see. There are other options here. You can add Boolean operators, does not match, does match, and match type, plethora of options, uh, match relationship, uh, either matches or does not. This provides you the ability to set additional uh, Boolean operators that match uh, a specific request by a value you'd like, such as and HTTP method does match, and you could put in some value the proxy would intercept said request. It's important to remember to check in intercept server responses. In this case, we chose and URL is in target scope as well. We want to intercept WebSocket messages as this application sends WebSocket requests and server responds. This next option is to unhide hidden form fields within HTML. And so you'll notice that when we hit refresh, our browser showed hidden form fields. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that as it provides some additional visual noise that you may not want. The options for match and replace allows you to strip certain values out of a request and replace them with other values. And this can be done by the header 
by body, etc. You can use exact matches, you can use regex, and, and you can enter a value to replace the matched value you've entered. The next thing we're going to look at are some of our miscellaneous options. One of my favorite is the unpack gzip deflate in requests. Previously I had written burp extensions to do this as mobile clients often send their requests in gzip format and now it's just included in burp. Notice that we navigated directly to burp and we have a proxy history tab. Burp does have a web interface and you can select a request and once you've selected that request you have the option to repeat said request. There is an option within Burp to disable the web interface if you should choose to do so. I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh on the browser and note that the hidden form fields uh, are no longer visible. One nice feature of Burp is within prox the proxy HTTP history you can show only those items which are in scope and in addition to that you can hide certain assets. You can do this by MIME type, you can do this by extension. In this case we've chosen to hide all JavaScript, CSS, etc. type resources. And this again cuts down on visual noise. The spider tab provides the option of using a custom scope if you'd like to be slightly more restrictive than what the target scope uh, provides. If you're not familiar with the spider, the spider sends a request to the website, reviews the hrefs linked within the page or JavaScript links, follows those links, and then performs the same operation recursively. Notice the maximum link depth. This is the max amount of times Burp will do that from a seed page. You'll also notice that there are form submission options. Burp will, when spidering, submit form on your behalf. The values shown here are what go inside those parameters. You can add a custom field and select the value you'd like to see placed inside that field. The individuate forms by option looks at those values that you've decided to individuate by and determines if the form is a new form. Similar options exist for the application login. You can enter credentials and have them automatically entered into the login form on the website. Again, these are all for spidering. And spidering is really just a nice way to discover content um, and have that content listed in your target sitemap. In terms of request headers, it's fairly basic. If you'd like to add a header that has a, some value, you can do so through here. You're going to want to enter the request header and its value as you'd like to see it sent in the request. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that as we don't need it. And we'll scroll back up and head over to the Options tab. At the Options tab, you have a Platform Authentication option. And this is because some applications require things like Basic Auth, and you'd want to enter in your Basic Auth credentials, and have give Burp the option of providing those credentials to the application on your behalf. But again, we don't need these options, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. We can continue scrolling down. And you'll notice the option for upstream proxy servers. Often you'll test behind a proxy server. And when you do this, you may need to enter the location of your proxy server into Burp. This is also uh, an incredibly useful tool when chaining Burp instances together. It's actually more common than you might think. And if your upstream proxy required authentication, we have the ability to enter credentials um, into Burp and handle those proxy servers and their authentication as required. And we'll continue down to hostname resolution. Oftentimes you'll come across a mobile application and maybe the development team wants you to 
send all the requests to a staging environment and perhaps the mobile application is configured only to send requests to the production environment. In this case, you can resolve to the host name that you would like. So for instance, if this was www.test.com and you knew the IP of a staging server, you could submit those values into the host name resolution portion of the connections tab. One other nice feature of Burp is the ability to add your own hotkeys so that when you press this combination of keys, something that you've defined occurs within Burp. One other nice feature is having the ability to place your temporary files in the location of your choosing. So we're going to go ahead and scroll back up and go to the intercept tab. We're going to choose to enable interception and you'll notice that our browser now sends uh, requests through proxy and allows you to review those responses. And without configuring it the way we did, you would not see those responses. Also notice that the proxy tab splits the request into several pieces. There's the raw request, there's headers, HTML, and the render pane is useful, but note that CSS and JavaScript are not um, rendered within that pane. And we can go ahead and go back to our target site map and we can filter by only in scope items. In this case we'll only see our target web application. Uh, we'll go to spider and turn spider on, let it run. We have a new resource that was added, so we can review this, robots.txt. And as you browse the application, as more resources are spidered, uh, this list will get longer. So I encourage you to periodically review your sitemap. That's all for this episode of SecurityCast. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed.